Yes, 300,000 people have signed up to a group called IT Army of Ukraine to fight Russian President Vladimir Putin on the digital front. The hacker army has already managed to disrupt Russian web services, state-owned media outlets, energy suppliers and even some banks. Yes, so is this the online battlefield really where the war is going to be won? Or is it just a distraction? So here yeah. to help us find out is Philip Ingram, a former senior military intelligence officer. Thank you very much. Thank you. So what's going on with all this hacking then? Well, we're seeing the anonymous group and we've seen this group of um, uh, individuals who come together there on Telegram to carry out you know, deliberate denial of service. So, so they're stopping websites working inside Russia and also defacing scripts to try and uh, push, uh, they're saying, to try and push uh, a greater understanding and reality of news out to the, out to the people of Russia. It's, it's a thorn in the side to uh, a lot of the Russian outlets. And there have been some successes in hacking into Russian government websites um, including some of their intelligence services sites, allegedly. Mm. And Philip, I mean, is this really going to be effective? Because there has been some criticism over the last few years that um, a lot of the government has focused more on threats from cyber warfare and, and so on, without actually focusing on the reality of real uh, military threats that we still do face, as we've now seen from the Russian invasion of Ukraine. There's, there's a difference between what governments are doing and what you know, these sorts of groups are doing. Um, from a government to government perspective, you know, the cyber warfare is, is you know, something that can have a major effect. It's not been used um, as we expected here from the Russians against us um, uh, and us back against the Russians again, because it's still in, uh, very immature. You know, there's a great danger that if you put a cyber weapon out, that it escapes into the wild. It doesn't go for where you've been targeted at. And that's what happened in 2017. Um, with the not Petya virus that was targeted on Ukrainian businesses. It, it escaped into the wild. It was targeted by, by Russian um, GRU. Um, and when it escaped, it actually mm. damaged an awful lot of Russian MOD computers, as well as um, NHS and, and everything else. So there's that grave danger that's there. Mm. And, it, and it won't affect the, the fighting on the ground. That is, that is physical warfare. It, it will have little impact on that. We expected a bit more from Russia's hackers, didn't we? We were told constantly that this lot was to be feared, that they were, you know, supposedly this kind of network of cyber animals, as it were. And actually, we haven't heard a peep out of them, have we? Well, we did expect, uh, expect an awful lot more, but I think that's because of you know, what I've said, the, the potential for it to escape into the wild and therefore the wider damage it could do to Russian business and uh, its ability to operate normal services at home uh, when, at the end of the day, you know, Putin was expecting the war in Ukraine to be something that would be over and done with in a number of days, if not just a couple of weeks, rapidly done through you know, the conventional military forces on the ground. Cyber has little impact on conventional military forces on the ground. Um, it it's more whenever you're dealing with state on state related stuff. And therefore, the danger's still there if they decide that that's what they want to try and do to influence things that are going on uh, in the EU, NATO, and other political decision making lines. And of course, backed with all of that is their information campaign. And that is very, very active. That same point. Isn't this yet another example then of how Russia has? not been as impressive as perhaps a lot of people assumed and thought. And actually, even on this front as well, they are uh, far from as strong as what many people expected. Yeah, I, I think it'd be dangerous to say they're not as effective in the cyber world. They, there's been no evidence of them using cyber weapons, and, and we don't want them to start to do that because of the potential damage that it would cause um, and you know, uh, escalate into retaliatory uh, um, uh, effects within the cyber world, and you never know where that'll go. But overall, Russia has not performed in the way that um, Western analysts would have expected beforehand, and it's not performed in the way that the Russians expected. Um, so you know, Putin has been lied to and bluffed by his military commanders, um, and you know his his weapons from a technical perspective are not operating as well as uh, we had thought they would do. The Ukrainians are putting up a, an absolutely superb defence uh, and are holding the Russians um, steady. You know, they have effectively fixed them in place in many places. Yeah. All right, Philip. Thank you very much, Philip Ingram, there, former senior military intelligence officer. We're going to delve into.